while he was suffering, he cried. And many of you who are listening to me and and who will listen to me, you at a place and there's something that's come in your life. There's something that's hit you like a no, uh, well, with a low blow. There's a situation, there's a, um, there's a, a trial, a tribulation. Whatever it was, it has caused you to cry. Many of you are crying, and one of the reasons why you cry because one one reason, one way a person cries because when they're sad, or when they're in pain, when they're suffering, when they're going through problems, when they're going through something that's uncomfortable, oftentimes they cry. And just as a kid, when a kid cries, they cry to their parents. That means that 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 that's saying to their parent that I have an issue. I need your help. And but but not only that, not only that. Let me finish. Jesus cried, and he thought he was forsaken. He cried, he thought he was forsaken, and the temple split. He cried, then he thought he was forsaken. The second thing, he thought he was forsaken. The Son of God, at that point, at that moment, where depression, the weight of the world was up all, all upon him, he thought his father had forsaken him. And many of you who are listening to me, who will listen to me, you feel, and then talk to me, talk to me. In some ways, you feel God hasn't abandoned you. In some ways, you feel that God has forsaken you because in your situation, God hadn't moved. In your situation, you're still suffering. You thought by now that he would come in your situation and remove the pain and remove the suffering. But he hasn't. And, and, and because he hasn't, you're in pain. And you feel as though God has forsaken you. But let me tell you, the scripture says, God says that can a mother forget her suckling child? She may forget. But God says in scripture, God says, I will never forget you. As a matter of fact, I've engraven you in the palm of my hand. That means that I will never forget you. So in, in other words, in every time God looks at his hand, he sees you. Every time God, congratulations, congratulations, amen. That's, that's a good tear. That's good tears. That's good tears, Daddy. That's good tears. Tears of joy. But every time God looks at you, he sees you. He understands your condition. And he never, and he know what you're going through, and which means that he's not going to forget you. He's mindful of you. God's mind is full of you. You need to hear me. You need to know at this place where you feel forsaken, you are not forsaken. God is there. He's mindful of you. And so don't feel that way. See, the enemy will, 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 will play with your mind and put thoughts and stuff in your mind where you make you, make you feel stuff that's not true. See, he's a liar. Satan is a liar. The devil's a liar. He's the accuser of the brother. So in other words, he's going to put stuff in your mouth. He's put stuff in your head. Put stuff in your mind. And he's waiting on you to grab it. He's waiting on you to grab it. He's waiting on you to, to activate it. See, the enemy doesn't have no power over you. The only power that he has is the power that you give. And oftentimes, and oftentimes, and oftentimes, he will, get, he will, he will shoot something in a dream. He will shoot some situation in your eyes that you see or give you a little pain, and he wants you to interpret. And he understands that when you interpret it and when you, when you say it out of your mouth, you're sealing it. See, because God said there's power in your mouth. He said that God said, Scripture said that if you decree a thing, I'm going to hasten to perform it. And so the enemy knows that. And so what he will do, he will get you, he gets you to a place where he's trying to get you to talk. <coughs> talk, complain, murmur, complain, talk about your condition, oh me. Oh, oh, and, and what it is, you, <coughs> he want to get you to a place where you feel sorry. And, 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 and you, he want uh, you to a place where you have others to feel sorry for you. See, the enemy wants you to have a pity party. Someone put that in the comment, pity party. Pity party. That's what he wants. The enemy wants you to have a pity party. And see, to understand, see, words are seed. And just like I said, inside of every seed, there's a fruit. And when you begin to speak that thing, now you're planting seeds. 
And the more you keep talking about 